On this episode of the Sunday Night Heat, I talk about rumored backlash matches, update on Mal Ronaldo, and plans for Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Is the WrestleMania 34 rumored match Str Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar still intact? You'll find out on this episode and more right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the show where myself, Kyle Masters, rants or discusses about trending topics in the WWE or this episode, which is going to be a news and rumors roundup right here on Spreaker. When it is finished, it is posted on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app. And it is also available on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR. And it is also available on iTunes by searching up The Lowdown Show. So go check us out, guys, wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram now at no Holds Barred WP. So go give us a follow on all our social media outlets. I'm your host the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I am alone doing the Sunday Night Heat for this one, guys, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, I tried to get it live, but uh, it just didn't work out today, so I'm going to record this offline for you, but I'm still going to get it out there, and today, as you heard, uh, episode is about uh, the news and rumors from this week in the Dirty Bee. Um, I'm saving some other topics for the Sunday Night Heat for a couple more Sundays coming up, so uh, basically, this will be a news and rumors update just for you guys out there, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, so we'll just start off and we'll get right into it. Uh, Backlash rumored matches. So there's two rumored matches so far for Backlash happening on May 21st, I believe, 2017. Um, it, they look really good, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, brace yourselves for this. You got Randy Orton versus Baron Corbin for the WWE Championship. So Baron Corbin looks like he's going to get a WWE title push. Um, I'm on the fence about this too. Uh... I don't know how I feel. I mean, I want to see Baron Corbin, and I'm finally going to see him in a title feud, but is it too early? Should they have gone maybe the direction of him uh, not getting a title shot, uh, push him towards Money in the Bank, maybe making him win the Money in the Bank briefcase? That could still be the plans. Um, they could make him lose to Randy Orton here, obviously. I, I hate Randy Orton as a champion. He sucks ass. Like, he's terrible. Like, who, the hell, who the hell is excited for Randy Orton as a champion? Hmm? Tell me. No one. Absolutely nobody. Does nothing for anybody. No one I've talked to likes Randy Orton as a champion. Doesn't make sense. So I'd be all for it if Baron Corbin won the championship from Randy Orton right now. Um, that'd be great. But uh, Corbin getting his WWE title shot looks like as the rumored match for Backlash. The other one is the obviously set in stone match so far. Actually, we've got to wait till after Payback to see who the U.S. champion is. But it's rumored to be uh, Kevin Owens coming out on top in that one and going to Backlash to face AJ Styles for the U.S. title. And I'm hearing from a lot of people I know that uh, it's crazy to think that the, the mid-card title is building, it looks like it's built up more and it has better uh, main event level people in it than the WWE Championship. But I think, in my own opinion, that this is SmackDown's way to elevate that mid-card title. And that's a pretty good way to do it. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles for the U.S. title is going to be really, really, really sick. That's going to be an unreal match. I'm so excited for Backlash if that actually happens. It'll kick payback way out of the water man smackdown just has a better brand and look they're they're so they have a plethora of main event level people on smackdown that they have to even them out and put them in the mid card which is fine with me it just you got to give your your mid card talent that you have on the smackdown roster some some room to get in there and fit them in there like ty dillinger and dolph ziggler and, st and people like that so we'll see what happens but i'm excited for those two rumored matches backlash looks like it's going to be a sick pay-per-view next month in may so we'll see what happens and uh, we'll keep you guys updated as the coming weeks come uh next bit of news a jinder mahal push in the works according to sports kita Jinder Mahal is slated to be pushed as a serviceable mid-card heel on SmackDown Live. There's also possible talks of him holding a mid-card title at some point in 2017. So that's interesting uh, news there. As for the Balor situation with uh, Jinder Mahal, if you guys don't know, he there was a spot in the match from Raw this past week where he crushed Finn in the head with his elbow. Finn has a, uh, been diagnosed with a concussion. Don't know how bad it is. Still haven't heard anything about Finn Balor, so it remains to be seen uh, what the updated was, update is on him. I'm sure we're going to get it tomorrow before Raw. Um, Finn recently tweeted out a picture of Jinder with him wearing a cropped Balor shirt. Uh, Balor Club shirt, sorry. 
And as Dave Meltzer has reported, there is no backstage heat between the two or the rest of the locker room. So this is just a freak accident, and it looks like every, all the sides are uh, cool with each other. So that's a good sign. Um, it is unlikely there will be any on-screen angle based on the real-life incident at any point in time. Jinder Mahal is currently in a feud with Mojo Raleigh, whereas it is unclear if Finn Balor can make it back in time for the next episode of Raw. So, interesting situation. It looks like they're going ahead with a full heel mid-card push with Jinder Mahal on SmackDown. I'm okay with that. It's just as long as he doesn't knock out anybody and put anybody on the shelf, I'm cool with that. And I'm sure all of you out there are okay with that as well. Next bit of news. Bray Wyatt unhappy with Superstar Shakeup. Some interesting news here, guys, so brace yourself. Uh, the 2017 Superstar Shakeup gave a lot of WWE stars a chance of a, for a fresh start. For characters like Charlotte in the New Day, who had accomplished everything they possibly could on Raw, a move to SmackDown will give them opportunities to be seen as a new and exciting uh, talent to the WWE Universe. Uh, but not all superstars are thrilled about their new homes. A report from Pro Wrestling Unlimited is claiming that Bray Wyatt is frustrated about his move to Monday Night Raw. It is reported that Bray's move to, was a last-minute decision as it originally was supposed to be AJ Styles who was set to make the jump. The decision essentially ended the long-term plans for his feud with Randy Orton over the WWE Championship. Being a Raw superstar, it is not on the only reason for the frustration, however. The, fa the Wyatt family leader is upset that WWE has been constantly uh, constantly telling him one thing, the only for the opposite to happen. For instance, WWE kept changing their minds about him walking out of WrestleMania with the WWE title. These reports state that Bray's frustration has led to him becoming vocally upset backstage. And I would be too. This guy has done everything. Possibly everything to get built to this point right now. And this is the best work of his entire career. And you're trying to build him as the face of fear. Basically telling him, like, look, you're going to be the next face of fear. But then you're just going to have him job to Randy Orton. Like Randy Orton needed a fucking other title. Uh, another W title in his freaking repertoire. He didn't need that. Bray should still be champion right now. And he should still be on SmackDown. Raw, he's going to get buried. I wouldn't. I don't doubt that he's pissed off. Because he knows he's going to get buried. It's, it's terrible. It's a terrible situation. So keep reading here. Uh, not only does the decision to put Bray on Raw end the feud with Orton, but it completely gives away the results of the upcoming House of Horrors match with the Viper at Payback. Yes, as you just heard in the, the Backlash rumors. Unless WWE makes a stipulation that puts the winner of the match on SmackDown and the loser on Raw, as they did with Kevin Owens and Jericho, Randy Orton is winning this match. It is gar you, you make that decision, and basically the Payback match means nothing. You already know who's going to win. You're just going to see what the hell a House of Horrors match is going to be. That's basically your only like uh, anticipation for this goddamn match. Other than that, it makes zero sense. Who gives a fuck? Um, there's at least zero chance Raw gets both Universal and WWE Championships on their roster. On top of all this, rumors are stating that WWE doesn't even know what the House of Horrors match will be. So you don't even know. You've announced it, but you don't even know what the hell you're going to do within it. <laughs> there's rumors, which I'll get to later, but you don't even know what the hell it's going to be. And you, <laughs> just This is just a cluster. This just shows how much a superstar shakeup is a clusterfuck, like we said on the Lowdown show. It just it, it literally... It's done too quickly. Vince should have waited. He shouldn't have freaking jumped the gun like they always do. Derby always likes to jump the gun. This is, again, Exhibit A again. They just jumped the gun on too many things. They could have waited till August to do another draft. That way you have more time to think about it and more time to plan things. Um, they did run a poll on Derby.com asking fans what they'd like to see in a House of Horrors match. We'll get into later. Just a few interesting things on there. Um, Stone Cold was even critical on a handling of Orton and Wyatt's for WrestleMania feud. Now with Bray on Raw, with uh, his ceiling gets much lower. Considering that his first program appears to be with Finn Balor, there is a real danger of Wyatt falling back into the pattern of threatening his opponents with mind games and spooky gimmicks, only to lose and blow off the match to the feud of the feud. And it's true. He look at the last three Wrestle. He hasn't won yet at WrestleMania, and he's built insane feuds leading up to it. But then he's just gonna lose. It's just gonna. You're just gonna know Bray Wyatt's gonna lose. It's an automatic thing, and it's terrible. They, they've ruined Bray Wyatt. They completely ruined this guy. There's some saving grace left, which I'm hoping they they, they rethink what they're doing and help save his gimmick. But right now he, he he's slowly falling into that cycle where he's just gonna be again a recycled mid card talent that has a good gimmick behind him, but you know he's gonna lose the match. He's he's basically jobber status. 
It's terrible. Uh, this feels like a big setback for someone who only got a few months ago defeated John Cena and AJ Styles on the same night. If you guys don't remember that, that's insane, right? This guy beat Jay, John Cena and AJ Styles on the same night, yet he's being put in the predicament he is right now. Terrible. Terrible misuse of Bray Wyatt and an exceptional piece of talent. What else is new with WWE? All right, we'll move on here. We got a New Day SmackDown update. According to PW Insider, there's been a lot of backstage talk of holding the New Day off WWE TV for their SmackDown debut. And this is until Kofi Kingston is ready to return. Kofi recently suffered an ankle injury and underwent surgery. He expected to be out of action for several weeks now. Um, I think that's a good idea. Just keep him off TV and maybe do some backstage antics here and there, but don't have him actually have him debut in the ring or maybe do some vignettes or something. But uh, I think it's a good idea to keep him off TV until COVID comes back. It's just two new day people. It's not the same. And let's say they do debut them and they just they carry on with the blow up doll gimmick. I don't know. Um, other than that, uh, if New Day is going to be a crucial part of the tag team division on SmackDown, I'd love to see some more wrestling out of them. I know they have the ability to do it. Now, I just I want to see less antics and more wrestling out of them. And that's pretty much it. Move on here. Got uh, some notes on Ronaldo and the WWE situation. Uh, there are reports going around saying WWE is paying Ronaldo to keep quiet about his issues with JBL. It should be noted that these reports are based off this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter and comments made by Dave Meltzer. And no settlement between WWE and Morrow has been confirmed. Meltzer noted that, but that there is belief in the WWE that they're working hard to come to a settlement and that would include an agreement on Ronaldo not speaking publicly about the issues. Derby noted before the Morrow is uh, Derby noted before that Morrow is under contract until August 12th of this year. The, the observer adds that Morrow's contract does not allow him to give unauthorized interviews on the company. So don't expect Morrow to come out and say anything anytime soon. But the whole situation with JBL, and I don't think he even wants to talk about it. I don't blame him. He's got a, a serious mental health issue, and it, it's something to take uh, seriously and not lightly. Um, and I'm loving all the fans that have been, uh, and us included, tweeting to Ronaldo and giving us support. He, he needs all that right now. And in, I don't think we can – if he doesn't want to talk about it, just don't bug him about it. He doesn't need to talk about it. It is what it is. He's doing the right thing. He's doing his own thing. We appreciate what he's doing, and let's just end it off at that. Uh, let's move on here. Booker T uh, and his Raw commentary update. So as noted, David Otunga's WWE Raw commentary debut has been delayed for six weeks due to the movie he's filming. WWE announced today that, or, uh, the other day that Booker T will be replacing Otunga while he's out. They issued this following statement. Uh, where is it? I just skipped over it, my bad, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. While new Raw commentator David Otunga it will be spending the next six weeks shooting Katrina, an upcoming action film. There will be a Hall of Famer. Booker T will temporarily be joining Michael Cole and Corey Graves on the Team Red announce desk. The change comes mere days after Superstar Shakeup moved Otunga from SmackDown Live team to Raw, while the red brand Byron Saxton went to Team Blue. Booker, a longtime former SmackDown commentator and frequent kickoff panelist, will be bright in his insight. In an unending supply of catchphrases, the Monday night's hottest show uh, until Otunga returns to WWE in late May. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I'm actually intrigued for Booker T, man. We're going to hear a shucky ducky quack quack moments. I'm excited for that. Booker T is a hilarious commentator and brings a lot of enthusiasm to the commentary desk. So good for Booker T again. There's a shot here for six weeks. And, you know, I, in my opinion, no offense to Watonga, they should just keep Booker T. Um, I, only if he wants to do it. Otunga is just, I don't know. I, I don't feel like Otunga is a good commentator. It's just, it's not his thing. He should stick to what he knows best. And that's his lawyer, you know, his lawyer shit. And I don't know, man. Just commentary Otunga sucks. Just, that's it. Uh, so let's get into the, the teasing gimmicks for the House of Horrors match. They already issued a fan console survey this past week and asked fans which elements would interest them for the House of Horrors match. So this is where the elements that were listed. A cage. A uh, sheeple, whatever a sheeple is. A match set outside the arena. Darkness. Mirrors. Creepy and scary things. Fire. Projected images. Let's hope not. Music. Pitchforks. Fog. Other. And nothing different. <laughs> nothing different? <laughs> so a regular match? <laughs> a 
<laughs> oh my god. I don't know. Look, see, it clearly shows everybody doesn't know what the hell what to do. Is they're asking fans for like ideas. That's sad. That is honestly sad. How do you make a match and you have no idea what the hell to do with it? Or you don't even know what it is. That is complete garbage. Man, figure it out, WB. All right, so let's move on. We got plans for Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman to talk about. So regarding the Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman storyline, a match between them initially expected is initially expected for the payback pay per view. There has been talk about Reigns taking some time off to sell the ambulance attack from Strowman. I hope so, because you don't just get up after that. It is possible that Reigns versus Strowman will be held off until the June 4th Extreme Rules pay per view instead. WWE could also do a stipulation match at the pay-per-view, which it could be such as an ambulance match, or book Reigns to lose without being pinned or made to submit. Interesting. According to Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com, Strowman vs. Brock Lesnar for the Universal title is currently scheduled to be Lesnar's next match, and it will likely happen in June or July. Or I'm thinking even possibly SummerSlam, in my opinion. Reigns and Lesnar are expected to be kept apart until SummerSlam at the earliest, but Meltzer reports that WWE still wants to do the match at next year's WrestleMania. Which is complete horseshit. We already had it at WrestleMania 30. It was a one. Why the hell do we need to have it again? Completely useless. So many better matches, but we'll save that for another day. Um, so next news. Stephen McMahon update on being kept off TV. As noted, Stephen McMahon has been kept off WWE... TV to sell the table bump from uh, Triple H and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 33, which is an incredible uh, <laughs> table bump. That was awesome. And I always always forgot, too, that uh, she took a bump the year before, too, uh, with Roman Reigns' spear. So it's crazy that she can uh, she agrees to take these bumps. Uh, anyways, besides getting Rollins over, another reason for the table bump was Stephanie had a family vacation scheduled at Turks and Caicos Beaches Resort in the Caribbean. Interesting. So, this is just for uh, family vacation. That's okay. You know, whatever. Stephanie, you can go do your thing. Last bit of news. Simon Gotch catering incident before WWE's release. As noted, WWE parted ways with Simon Gotch of the VOD Villains last week after he apparently requested his release. This may not have anything to do with the departure, but the Wrestling Observer newsletter reports that there was an incident with Gotch cat- at catering before April 4th Orlando SmackDown episode. Gotch reportedly tipped over his own chair and got mad when he went over. The yeah, Observer notes that f- the fall was bad enough that it caused a scene. We noted that before that Gotch's personality rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Some had expected him to be cut ever since the backstage incident with Sin Cara in 2016, which was said to be a one-sided destruction by Cara. Um, okay, I know it's not a lot of news there, ladies and gentlemen, but whatever. Simon Gotch... I don't know, man. You you gotta fix your temper, man. You gotta fix the the problem you have, and you're rubbing people the wrong way. You're not, not a lot of companies are gonna hire you for that. He'll probably work around the indies. I don't see him coming back to WWE anytime. And it looks like they're going forward with the singing gimmick, uh, which Corporate Cappy predicted uh, for Aiden English from now on. But other than that, guys, I think that's it for news and rumors. Yep, that's gonna do it. And that's gonna do it. For the Sunday Night Heat, uh, the show on Noel's Bar Wrestling Podcast, where myself, Kyle Masters, talks about any news or trending topics in the WWE. It is recorded right here on Spreaker, and when it's done, it is posted on Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app, or it's posted on YouTube.com slash NHBWR or on iTunes in full. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at No Holds Bar WP as well. So go give us a follow, and gentlemen. I'm your host, Kyle Masters. See you next time.